Hi guys, Dr. Rob Barrington here with some more nutrition advice. I'd like to talk today about vitamin E supplements. Um, the reason I'd like to talk about uh, vitamin E supplements is because I think with vitamin E, the chemistry of vitamin E, the structures of vitamin E are misunderstood. And I think a lot of people uh, buy vitamin E supplements and they don't really know what they're buying. Um, vitamin E is a, a, a very uh, difficult supplement to understand because there is such a a, a large number of um, terminologies that are needed in order to be able to understand the chemistry of vitamin E. So what is vitamin E? Well, the, the main thing to understand about vitamin E is it's not a single compound. It's not a single vitamin. Uh, it's actually a range of different isomers. There are eight isomers with vitamin E activity. Um, we have alpha, beta, gamma and delta tocopherol. We have alpha, beta and gamma tocotrienol. Now, the difference between the tocopherols and the tocotrienols is that the tocopherols have no double bonds in their, ch in their chain. The tocotrienols have double bonds and therefore they have kinked chains. That's the difference between the tocopherols and the tocotrienols. And that difference in structure gives them different chemical activities in the body. Now, because there are eight isomers that all share the same biological activity as the main parent compound, which would be termed as alpha tocopherol, um, because there are eight isomers and they're all chemically different, we would expect a range of different biological effects in the body. And to some extent, that is true. Uh, for example, the tocopherols are very good antioxidants. They sit in the cell membranes. They protect the cell membranes from lipid peroxidation. That's their main function. And that may be why the tocopherols have a cardioprotective effect, because oxidation is now thought to be involved in the etiology of, of, of cardiovascular disease. The tocotrienols are also antioxidants. Um, they're not quite as good antioxidants as uh, the particularly alpha tocopherol, not, not in cell membranes, but they do have uh, other effects. Uh, for example, the tocotrienols have been shown to lower cholesterol levels, uh, and they may do that through inhibition of particular enzymes in the liver. So the different fractions, the different isomers actually Maybe both uh, the tocopherols and the tocotrienols are cardioprotective, but they may have slightly differing effects. Now, when you go into a health food shop and you buy your vitamin E, you will often be buying just alpha tocopherol. Now, the reason that you generally will be buying alpha tocopherol is it's because it's the biologically most active form of vitamin E. It's the form that most of the studies have been performed on. Um, alpha tocopherol has the highest affinity of all the vitamin E isomers for the tocopherol binding protein, and therefore it is more preferentially put into lipoproteins. Now, the disadvantage with taking alpha tocopherol is that it tends to crowd out the other vitamin E isomers. If you have very high intakes of alpha tocopherol, you tend to get reductions in the levels of the other vitamin E isomers in your body. Now, this can be problematic because those other isomers may have important biological effects. So taking too much alpha tocopherol may actually be detrimental. And this may be why some of the studies that have used alpha tocopherol and used very high doses of alpha tocopherol to look at cardiovascular disease and the way that vitamin E can protect against cardiovascular disease, some of these studies have shown inconsistent results. Uh, while some of the studies show a cardioprotective effect for alpha tocopherol. Some of them show no effect. Some of them actually show a negative effect. And this may be because uh, taking too much alpha tocopherol may actually, for example, lower levels of the gamma tocopherol, which may also have a particular role and a cardioprotective effect will make work in a slightly different way. So when you go in to a health food shop and you look at your vitamin E, it's very important to try and take a mixed tocopherol um, uh, supplement. Now, you can buy alpha tocopherol on its own. However, you can also find it in a more natural state where it is present with its gamma, beta and delta tocopherol cousins. Um, this would be more like you would find it in food. Obviously, in food, there are higher levels of gamma tocopherol and alpha tocopherol in most foods, but they're also present with the other isomers. Now, generally, supplements of tocotrienol are not readily available. You can find them. They are, they are on the shelves if you, if you look hard enough, but they're not generally what would be termed a vitamin E supplement. They're a specialist supplement. Uh, I would recommend that if you can find 
a uh, vitamin E uh, supplement that contains the to all the tocopherols and all the tocotrienols, that would be the best supplement to take because it would be most similar to the types uh, a type of vitamin E you would find in food where you would generally find a mixture of the different isomers. Now, when we look at foods, um, some foods contain uh, mainly alpha tocopherol, other foods contain high levels of gamma tocopherol. Some foods are rich in tocotrienols, but a, a healthy diet will contain a good mixture of all of the isomers. And therefore, any supplement you take should also contain a mixture of the isomers. There's one other thing uh, that's important to understand about uh, the chemistry of vitamin E, and that is that it can be synthesized in a laboratory uh, artificially. As well as being extracted from foods, uh, we can also synthesize it in a laboratory. However, uh, plants are much better at synthesizing vitamin E than humans. They use enzymes to synthesize the vitamin E, and plants, when they produce vitamin E, always produce the D form of the vitamin. So it would be D alpha tocopherol or D beta tocopherol. It's always the D form. Now, when we synthesize vitamin E in the laboratory, humans don't use enzymes, they use chemical reactions. And those chemical reactions can produce either the D or the L form of the vitamin. So it would be DL alpha tocopherol. If you look at your supplement and it says DL alpha tocopherol on the back, it is a synthetic form of vitamin E. If you look at your, um, your, your, your vitamin E supplement and it says D alpha tocopherol, you have a natural form of vitamin E that has likely been taken from a plant source. If you take the DL alpha tocopherol, you have to be aware that the L form of the vitamin is not biologically active in any way. If half of your vitamin is made up of the L form because you have the DL form and 50% of it will be in the D form, 50% of it will be in the L form. If you have that synthetic supplement where 50% is in the L form, you will only have 50% of the activity biologically compared to the D form, the natural form. So you would need twice as much vitamin E in order to be able to get the same effect. And that's very important because many of the supplements, particularly the cheaper ones, are the synthetic form. They're in the DL form and therefore they have less biological activity. So when you go into a health food shop, it's important to buy a supplement that has a range of tocopherols and a range of tocotrienols. It's important to get the natural form of vitamin E, which is the D form. If you do take the DL form, perhaps it's in your multivitamin or you've already got some tablets at home and you've had a look and they're in the DL form, be aware that the activity of the DL form is about half of that, the natural form. Therefore, you would have to adjust your dose uh, accordingly. Don't take single uh, high doses of single uh, vitamin E compounds, particularly uh, D uh, alpha tocopherol, because that will reduce the levels of the other tocopherols and the tocotrienols in your body, and they may have important biological uh, health effects. Of course, the best way to get your vitamin E is through your food. Oats are a great source of tocotrienols. You can also get vitamin E in most plant foods. Wherever there is oil in plants, you tend to find vitamin E. So for example, nuts, are very high in fat, they're also a good source of vitamin E. The vitamin E in the plants is used for the same reason that it is uh, used in the humans, and that is as an antioxidant. The, the, the plants want to protect the, the polyunsaturated and unsaturated fats in their uh, tissues, so they use vitamin E, they synthesize vitamin E uh, for that effect. Uh, this vitamin E is an antioxidant. Uh, when we consume those polyunsaturated fats, we take in the vitamin E with them, and that is how we obtain our vitamin E through our diet. So you can obtain good levels of vitamin E from your diet if you eat uh, plant foods that contain polyunsaturated fats. However, if you want to supplement, the best types of supplement are the natural forms of vitamin E and supplements that contain a range of tocotrienols and a range of tocopherols.